Awesome. So welcome everyone to our Tuesday night team call. It is very exciting because tonight we are linking arms with the bombshells themselves. Very exciting. Um, and congratulations, Sophie and MD, it's done. Um, which is phenomenal because I remember speaking to you only a few weeks oh, ago. I didn't know it was a call. Like, look, hun, got to just do what I got to do going for NMD and then boom, she's done it which is absolutely phenomenal. So we have some awesome content for you guys today. Um, there's going to be a mixture of stories. There's going to be some really cool ideas on leadership. Um, so hopefully you guys get loads and loads out of this call. So thank you so much, Sophie, for being on. Um, I know that you're probably a very seeked woman at the moment. So everyone's messaging you to, to jump on and do that. Oh, he muted me. Um, I just want to kick it off by um, handing it over to Sophie. So for any of you guys that don't know who Sophie is, I'm not sure what rock you've been living under. Um, but Sophie is one of the newest NMDs, which is absolutely incredible. Um, these girls are in Sydney, which is exciting. Um, so Sophie, let's kick it off with... I guess the one thing that I've always noticed sitting on sitting, you know, third person is that, you know what, this bombshells um, team that you have are absolutely phenomenal. But what really stands out is building that tribe and that culture. So can you walk us through what that looks like? How did the bombshells come about? And, you know, how do you build a culture within a team? Yeah, of course. So when you asked me to talk about community, hi girls, hope you're all well. When you asked me to talk about community at first, I thought, oh, that's a weird one. Normally it's like, can you talk about social media and like how to recruit on social media? And I was kind of like, oh, community. I'm going to have to like really rein it in and think about how important this is. And then when I started making notes on it, I was like, I love this topic because this is the core, like this comes before anything else, guys. Before you go out and build this amazing team, you have to really understand community and understand the importance of community. So for me, um, oh, it's just gone to just my face. That's interesting. <laughs> um, so for me, it was it's really the bread and butter of your business. It was the reason that I joined. It's a bit of a running joke uh, in my team that I didn't have any friends in Sydney, which is very true. For those of you do that don't know, obviously I'm English. And I moved over to Sydney about five years ago now. I've got a really solid group of friends in England. Um, I went to uni there, studied psychology, and then came out here just on a working holiday visa. I was only supposed to stay a few months, and I met my partner out here, as all the Brits do, come out, marry an Aussie man. Um, that's like the goal when you come to Australia. <laughs> Tick. <laughs> Not quite, but nearly. Um, and... Yeah, so I had a really strong sense of community in the UK and I moved out here and I really had no one. Uh, for anyone who's ever moved cities for a partner, it's kind of, you know, I was friends with his friends, girlfriends and things like that. But in terms of myself and my identity, I was at a real loss. I was 22 at the time. I nannied out here to try and, um, you know, just, just get back into uh, the child psych field and things like that. But I was just lost and I didn't know what I wanted. So it's quite a, like I say, a running joke in the team that I started Bombshells because I needed friends. That was why I started at its absolute core. I didn't start to make money. I didn't even start to like help people get healthy. I didn't even think about any of that side of it. I started because I wanted to build a community. And it's also the reason that I will absolutely stay forever. So I think once you've got that around you, it, it's the reason that I'll stay forever, but it's also the reason that other people in the team will stay forever. You know, you girls building teams, you may have people who aren't necessarily running at the pace that you want them to run at, yet it's okay because you've got that community and they are the people who make up the foundation of your business. So if you've got 500 people who, okay, they're not doing much, but they put through a few orders a month and they love the community, that's a really stable business. So you can't discount the importance of community. I said community 500 times already. <laughs> you can't discount the importance of community and the importance 
importance of building it. I think it comes from really understanding your tribe and um, nailing your tribe, knowing who it is you're looking to recruit and also not making excuses around it. So for too long, I made so many excuses around the fact that, um, you know, I didn't know people here. I didn't have a network here. It's too hard. I don't have an upline here, blah, blah, blah. God, bore myself. And when I actually just got out of my own way and thought, do you know what? I've got a Facebook account. I can have 5,000 women just like me in Sydney and I can build a business on Facebook. Like that is so powerful, guys. You cannot discredit the idea that social media can allow you to build this life and build this community. Every single one of you has the power to find 10 babes who all enjoy the things you wanna do, who will go for a glass of wine with you on a Friday night that you can get all together and bam, you've got a team, bam, you've got a community. So I think community is the most important thing that you can focus on in this business. And I think when you've got your tribe down and when you are consistent with your social media and you get out of your own way in terms of excuses, it becomes easy to build yes yes and I think you know and it's funny that you say you know that it was something that you're not usually asked you know to to present on but you know I think the the message that we really want to get through um, tonight and across the board all the time is that without culture and without community you know you're gonna have a business that does this Okay, and you know, we all want to be here for an incredibly long time. Uh, we found something that allows us to hang out at the beach and get paid for it. So, you know, I think the other cool thing, and, and I just want to say, so like, this is something that, you know, maybe you didn't see, but from the outside, it is so incredibly inspiring to see what you created with the bombshells when it comes to community and culture. So um, that's a really, really cool. And I think it's, it's something, it doesn't matter where you are in the business. It doesn't matter whether you're an SDBF or a, a 300 club NMD, um, you know, to get to that 300 club NMD, you have to have that vision of what your community, um, is going to look like and what that culture is within that community. So, um, leading on from that, I think, look, I wasn't going to ask you, but, how did you recruit people just like you when you didn't know them? Did you originally build a relationship with them or did you just go straight in and go, hey, you know what, I'm looking for babes that want to be able to work from home? No, not at all. So I'm not a fan of firing straight in and trying to recruit people. I'm a massive fan of relationship building. And I think sometimes there's a misconception that because you build a business on social media, it somehow means that you don't take as much care or as much time when it comes to your recruitment post process, when actually it can be quite the opposite. I think sometimes if you go on a coffee date and the sole purpose of that coffee date is to recruit, that's a lot of pressure. Like, you know, you've got to do a business presentation and you know it's coming. Whereas when you're building on social media and you're having genuine interactions with people, you can drop the business when the time is right. So for me, it was a case of building my tribe every single day. That's something I still do now. I had 20 new friends every single day and having new conversations every day. And it's not, hey, do you want to join my team? It's, hey, oh my gosh, just saw you've been to Bali on holiday. Where did you stay? Did you have a good time? It's just having conversations with people, building trust, becoming an authority figure, and then making your social media so amazing and so different and unique that people come to you you know every day people come to me i want to join the bombshells they don't even know what bombshells is they've never even heard of juice plus whatever it was i could be like we're gonna sell pens and they'd be like yeah let's do it they just want to be part of my tribe they want to be part of the community so it's like you've got to get it so solid and so consistent like that's a word we say all the time in this business and it's a word that people kind of go oh consistency but it's like it's the key like that is how you build a business consistent action every day and um that's what i've done so every day i have new conversations with babes just like me you know i'm not having conversations with 45 year old moms who've got kids who are 10 and 7 because generally that's not my tribe you know obviously you're going to attract all different people and those people come in as well but on a daily basis when you're adding people and you're having conversations it all comes down to your tribe and identifying who your tribe are who you want to help who you want to recruit so when it comes to um nailing your tribe you know i could do a whole call on that but in a brief you want to kind of work out who is your dream team member what does she look like where does she shop you know um where does she hang 
out? Where does she eat? What does she do on a Friday night? Does she have kids? Does she work? What does she do for work? Like a million questions that I'm sure Mel will help you with and pop up in your team group on identifying your tribe if she's not already, which I'm sure she has. Um, that really help you to hone in on that recruitment process and make it so much easier. So I think you just can't discredit the fact that social media is so, so powerful. And if you get the get the community down first then the recruitment process becomes so much easier yeah awesome and it's such good advice you know there obviously is going to be a couple of people within your your time of building your business where you know what um you you meet them you you get onto the conversation about what is it that you do and boom they want to join right there and then they know nothing they've watched nothing but the chances of that happening are really slim and most people will take their time. So I think, you know, the importance of understanding that, <coughs> excuse me, what we do now doesn't necessarily show up straight away, um, which, you know, I'm really glad that you mentioned consistency because, uh, you know, we wait for the secret sauce, right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> where's that chocolate sauce? Um, and it literally is just the word consistency. So, so if, if there was one thing that you could share um, about, you know, what you're, you're a new team member, let's take it back to you're a new team member in the Juice Plus business um, and, you know, I guess really what we want to paint for people is, you know, we have big visions about what we want and where we want to go, but honing in on what did it take to get to NMD what did your days look like so it took me in, t in terms of time it took me three years to get to NMD and I remember um when I started I was like I'm gonna be an NMD in two days like I was like I'm, I'm gonna smash it I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and then it didn't quite happen like a lot of us have been there and it's interesting actually that you should ask that question because when I was at um being Christine's 100 club party which I very kindly got invited to I had a bit of a aha moment and I was telling the team about this last week because I remember listening to their speeches and being so moved and and I was stood next to one of my good friends, Simon, and he sort of nudged me and said, five years to Club 100, not bad, hey? And I thought, five years to Club 100, like five years to that level of freedom. Like, are you willing to work hard for five years of your entire life to get that level of freedom? And I was like, yes, like that just resonates with me so much. And I wish I'd kind of been told that from the start, that, you know, you might not do it in six months, guys. You're not going to do it in six months. But if you do it in five years and create that huge freedom, sorry, there's a baby. <laughs> if that's your baby, you please mute yourself. If you do it in five years and you create that huge freedom, that's incredible. So I think the main thing I would tell people from the start is that it's not a race and you've got to stop getting caught up in this comparison world. Because I joined the business at a time where I was on the UK plan and the UK was going like that. People were hitting energy in six months. It was madness. And that was what made me think that that was normal. And I think I compared myself so much to other people in the business that I held myself back because I was so hard on myself when I didn't do it. So if I just got out of the comparison game, and actually realize that this is my journey and I'm gonna do it at my pace and it's not a race and that's okay. I think I would have enjoyed the journey more and I also would have um, probably done it faster because I wouldn't have been so caught up in my excuses. So I think accepting that it's not a race and don't compare your journey to everyone else's is absolutely crucial for the newbies and for everyone. If you've been in the business for five years and you're stuck at a position, it's not a race, like it's not a comparison. Everyone has different things going on in their lives. Everyone, you know, it's just different for everyone and that's okay yeah yeah totally it's so important you know and I think it's about there are loads of people within the business right that we see absolutely running you know 100 club in this amount of time and and I think it's about understanding that some processes that people are using especially with social media aren't duplicatable you know so understanding that is really important because if you can get duplication right then you're going to organically grow your business to 100 club anyway um so tell us so the last little bit that i want to ask you is um what was your what was the book for you that was an absolute game changer or audio i oh good Question. I'm a massive Jim Rohn fan so he's cool when it comes to network marketing and I've never really been like a 
network marketing student. You know, I love girl code and I love um, how to win friends and influence people. But I think really learning the fundamentals and listening to anything that Jim Rohn said taught me so much in the early stages of my business. I think sometimes we can almost, when you've got these girl gangs going on, you know, you've got boss and you've got bombshells, you can almost get caught up in that and forget to kind of learn the tools of your trade. At the end of the day, this is a network marketing opportunity and you have to embrace that. So anything Jim Rohn says for me is like the Bible. And um, I love the guy. And I think there's so much to be learned from his wisdom and from, you know, everything that he shares and um, mainly audios for me. Yes. Awesome. You, um, engaging. Sorry. You want me to touch on engaging? You yes, about please. That? Yes. Yeah. Take it away. Um, so I think one of the most important things, Mel asked me to talk a little bit about keeping your team engaged. And I just wanted to touch upon a couple of things. Um, one of the most important things you can do to keep your team engaged is walk the walk. So I say this to my girls all the time, and it's so important, whether you're an NMD or a DVF, you have to walk your walk. If you're bringing people into your team and you know telling them what they need to be doing, but you're not doing it yourself, you're not going to earn respect within your business. So it's really, really important that no matter where you're at in your business, you always make sure you walk the walk. So we do like a bombshell of the month competition, for example. And even though I can't win it, I always aim to be at the top of that chart. Like that is my number one goal for every single month. Because if I'm not up there and I'm not putting on new customers and I'm not signing up new team and getting them promoted every single month, then my team won't respect me in the way that I want them to respect me. And then when they come to me for advice, if I'm not walking my walk, it's kind of the advice is just not as, as solid because they're kind of like, well, what does she know? Because she's not recruited anyone in a few months. So you've really got to make sure that no matter how far you get in the business, you continue to grow and you know you continue to walk the walk and really earn that respect from your business and, and from the people in it. And then I think the other thing that I just wanted to quickly touch upon before we move over to Mel was um, that in order to um, get to where you want to be in this business, you have to accept that in order to keep your team engaged, you are not responsible for motivating them. So it's not your job to motivate your team. Nowhere in the terms and conditions of this business does it say that you are gonna to have to wake up every day and motivate your entire team and message them all and check in. It's not your job, it will drain the life out of you. To a degree, yes, you wanna be supporting your team and being a friend before you're an upline, but if people don't want it, if people aren't willing to work for it, you've got to leave them where they're at because they're gonna drag you down. So if you've been tagging a team member in like, we've got a team call tonight, tag your team, and you've been tagging someone for a year and they've never been on, leave them be, let them come to you. They know where you are, they know where to find you, let them do their thing, love on them, be a friend to them, but tell them that if they wanna build a business, they know where to find you and focus on finding those new people that want to engage. I think that's the most important thing when it comes to keeping your team engaged is engaging with people who actually want to engage with you because it will drag you down, it will slow you down and it just makes it less fun. So rather than focusing on motivating your team or you know trying constantly to engage your team, try to focus more on on um, you know, finding those new people that really, really want it. That would be the final little piece of advice I'd give you before we move back to Mel. Yes, I love it. So true. And I think you know, the biggest lesson that I ever took, uh, it was a tough one. It was one that severely hurt me probably about eight months into the business was, you know, I did, I, I guess in that, uh, in that process of running, um, like a chicken with no head was literally how I reached NMD was understanding that, you know, everyone's journey is so different. And some people are here for just a couple of hundred dollars, you know, and that's completely fine. And I made the mistake and I was very open about it at the 90 day game plan. I made the mistake of if you weren't running in my business, then you weren't serious. And that cost me half of my frontline um, and most of the top positions within my business at that stage um, walked out because the pressure was too much. It wasn't fun. It was work. You know, it was a job. So that was a lesson. It dearly, dearly cost me. But in saying that, it actually taught me one of the most valuable lessons as well is to, you know, love on people where they're at. And, and in doing that, we were able to build an absolutely phenomenal culture when it comes to supporting people no matter where they're at and no matter how they arrived here. 
So, Sophie, I cannot thank you enough um, for sharing your bits of wisdom that you've got along the way. And, you know, I'm sure there's many, many more, um, many more chunks of wisdom to come because I'm just... I can see you, um, 100, 200, 300, 500 club, no worries whatsoever. So, yeah, shall we change gears? Yes, for sure. So thank you so much for having me on and thank you so much for letting me ramble at you. I am super excited to hear your story, Mel. So I've watched it before online. I've actually watched it a few times. I love it. I love your NMD speech. And I think it's going to be amazing for um, my team and your team as well to hear your story because sometimes it's ironic but your own team don't actually hear your journey because you only share it on other people's team calls. It's a funny one. So I'd love to hear a bit about you know, your journey to NMD and a little bit about you know, what you've been through in your life and what you've had to overcome in order to get to where you are because it blew me away when I heard the story. Yeah, so you're right. That I've actually never thought of it that way. Um, but you do. You end up sharing your story with um, with loads of other teams, and yeah, there's plenty of um, plenty of new faces entering in every single day that probably haven't heard my story. So. I've been in the business now for about two and a half years and when I joined Juice Plus, I was that really cool friend that didn't look at the link. Um, I was working a nine to five, I've got two small girls um, and I really tried time for dollars. My partner at the time worked on the mines so that meant that my kids um, you know, saw him once every four weeks, you know, and that's what life looked like for us then. And it was at that moment um, that when Juice Plus came into my life and I didn't take a look, it was, it was at that moment where I think the cogs started to tick, you know, and I started to think, I, I mean, I had no idea that a business like this even existed. So the wheels were in motion um, in my brain, but I did go on for another four or five months um, just living the nine to five grind. Um, it was horrible. My boss was horrible. I dropped my babies to daycare at six in the morning and I picked them up at six at night and that's what life looked like. So there came a time where I just went, yeah, well, I can't do this anymore. And I reached out to Jess and I just said, look, you look better. I can see that you feel better and you're getting to do everything that I can't. Um, so the fear of missing out really ate me up. And that's what got me to join Juice Plus was that I wasn't getting to do everything she was. So I joined and I had no idea what I was doing. Literally no idea what I was doing. Complete ignorance on fire. All I cared about um, was quitting my job. And what was the fastest route to make that happen like tomorrow, please? So we just absolutely went crazy with the business. And it really started with a couple of people, a couple of friends that loved the idea of the product and a couple of stay-at-home mums who an extra couple hundred dollars a month would be a game changer for them. And that's how the business started. And I quit my job a month in. I, I did not earn some crazy amount of money. I was just that crazy person that went stuff it. I would rather put eight hours a day into something like this and go hard um, and get some amazing results. So that's what we did. So I hit SC um, in month three and it was growing at a rapid rate, which was really, really cool. And I guess I sort of was learning what I needed to do as I went. I definitely did not have a daily method of operation. I did not have any structure in my day. Um, and my business really did take up eight or 10 hours of my day every single day. So I didn't really free up any extra time in the early days. Um, and that's why I say to people in my team, the way I built my business um, probably is only duplicatable if you're crazy. Um, so, but you know, we have to be open about those sorts of things because you know, it got results. It got the results I was looking for, but it also had some really major setbacks as well. So, 
as my business grew, um, we hit SSC in eight months. Um, and at the time, I'd said to my partner at the time, I said, look, you know, all I want to do is be able to bring you home from the mines. That's what I wanted to do. And I, I guess for a few moments there, everything lit up for me. And it was like, oh, my God, imagine how different life would be. Um, because I guess I was the single mom minus the financial issues. Um, and, you know, it was hard. It was really hard to try and run a business um, and also raise two little girls as well. So that was my goal. And it was around about eight months that I was able to make that call and say, you know what, you can come home now. And it wasn't because I was earning some ridiculous amount of money, but I was earning enough to be able to bridge the gap in the finances. Um, so that was the first time I think in my life um, that I was able to take the reins. And anyone that has heard my, my Anaheim speech um, in there, I did share, it was only 15 years ago for myself that I was homeless, I was severely drug addicted, I was on an absolute spiral of downhill self-sabotage and it came from no self-worth it came from a life of being told you're never going to be this you're never going to be that you're all, you're going to be a bad mum and it's believing everyone else's perception of you that put me in a hole and it took me years and years and years to get out. So you can understand, you know, that eight months into the business, I went, oh, my God, I'm doing everything that people said that I couldn't, you know. And I think it was at that moment for me, it was like, I don't even care about an MD. Like, dude, I've done it. I've made it, um, which is a really, really cool feeling. And, and it comes back to that not comparing. So... For myself, I was so extremely excited about what could happen now. You know, if I could make that happen, what else could I create? If I could create so much damage and pain in my life, imagine the success I could create if I had the right mindset. So I kept building the business um, and I became a network marketing pro. I became a recruiting pro and that was something that I, I really understood right from the start was that, you know, a lot of people are going to come into this business uh, for whatever reason, but you need to have a process in place as to how your business works. Um, and you know, that was something that I managed to master quite early on. So that was really cool. Business was growing. 12 months into the business, I reached QNMD and uh, look, I couldn't even tell you, <laughs> apart from it being nuts and ruling my life, um, that's why I reached NMD in 12 months because I really, I had no structure um, and I was so set on success and what I thought success looked like that I literally worked myself into the ground and don't get me wrong, it's all, it was all um, an amazing journey. All the roller coaster ride was amazing. I mean, it was crazy and it, it was <laughs> damaging some days, but um, the outcome was amazing and the team that we managed to build was phenomenal. The big game changer for me was about 16 months into the business. My whole entire life at the time fell apart. And I became a single mum. So everything that I worked for, every that initial first goal that I had out there fell apart. And I hadn't planned for that. I hadn't, I didn't have a plan B. It was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be an MD, everything's gonna be amazing, I'm gonna be time free, financially free, and I'm gonna have nothing to worry about. And all of a sudden life fell apart. But it was at that moment where I didn't have to sell my house. I didn't have to sell my car. I didn't have to pull my kids out of their school because for the first time in my life, financially, I had the reins and I could point them in whatever damn direction I wanted to and keep continually building from there. So NMD became a non-negotiable, even though it already was, but 
and it came a, it became a let's just get this in the bag and it was more of a I knew I could do it but it was more of a let's just get it done let's get it done and let's get it out of the way and that's exactly what we did so the jump though from QNMD to NMD was about almost a year almost a year so I think what really important in the messages that you've heard tonight is that the whole entire journey will not be a race the whole entire journey you might find that there will be sections where you've jumped from SC to SSC and it was really quick don't expect the same results from SSC to QNMD because there's structure to be built and the work needs to be done so it was at that moment for me that I realized that when the wall appears the work needs to be done and that wall smacked me in the face so goddamn hard but there was no way and I've got to not get emotional there was no way that I was ever going to look my children in the eye and say to them I couldn't be bothered or mummy's going to quit now because it's got a little bit hard. We went harder. We went harder. And we reached an MD in 21 months. Now that was amazing, but I'm going to be brutally raw. I arrived at an MD and went, oh, well, what next? <laughs> Is this it? Where's the big fireworks and where's my private jet? <laughs> but you know what? It was that thing where I needed to realize that I needed to go within. Success was within. There is no title that you will take. There is no job role in your life. There is nothing that you will do that is going to give you happiness. Okay, happiness comes from within and you need to go within to never go without. So now what makes sense to me two and a half years later, is if I had have just done the work on myself that I needed to work on from my past, if I had have just done it and swallowed it up early on, right, I probably could have saved myself a lot of pain along the way. And we all have it. We all pretend that we don't, but we all have it. And I'm on a journey now with a company called MJB Seminars and they are absolutely phenomenal and they spoke um, at conference helping people move through um, you know those challenges and, and the things that we have that go on in life so I'll be forever grateful that I stumbled across the right people to move forward but all I can say from here is that most of the massive growth the culture the tribe the community was built long after NMD was done. Why? Because I was able to take the pressure off and go, you know what? It's not about a title. NMD isn't going to pay your bills, okay? Clubs is where it's at. And, you know, that's one thing that I missed along the way. I was so determined on NMD that I missed everything else that I should have been concentrating on. But I am forever grateful for how, um, how our team ended up. So there are some massive lessons in there. And you know what? Some of them really hurt me, massively hurt me to see people walking out, to see people giving up, to see people hang their gloves up on their dreams. But like Sophie said, it's not your job. It's not your job to motivate people. You're going to have challenges in your business and the best thing you can do for, for yourself, your team and everyone around you is be completely raw and transparent about this journey. When people join your business, this is a business, okay? We have lots of fun and we're always out doing cool things, but you've got to be doing the work behind the scenes. And I, for 21 months straight, spoke to five people a day and I led with the business every single time. I never led with the product because my mindset behind that was if I lead with the product and they say no, they can't be in the business. If 
But if I lead with the business and they say no, they can still be a customer. And that's built as a frontline of, I think, somewhere between 70 to 80 frontline, um, which has been absolutely phenomenal. But in saying that, you know, it, this is a numbers game. This is totally a numbers game. The customer side of it is not a game. That is a life changer for people. But the business side of it is just a numbers game. And if you can get okay with the fact that one in five people will run, one in five. So get okay with the fact that you're going to need around about 15, 20, 25 frontline to reach NMD, give or take, unless you find a whole handful of rock stars, um, you know, but that's the, that's the reality is that this is a business and the day you start treating it like one, it will reward you in the same instance. Mel, you are incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. Every time I hear it, I'm just like, what a woman. Like, I think if anyone ever gives me an excuse again, I'm going to be like, go and watch Mel's story and then talk to me. compares. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're incredible. You're such an inspiration. I think to end, will you just share one lesson or one piece of advice that you just want to close on that you think is so important for the girls to know and you know maybe a piece of action that they can go and take on yeah totally so i think for me knowing what i know now what i've put in place now i wish i had have had in place prior because i think i would have been able to shut off now, a lot of you will be finding that you don't put your phone down. You take it to the toilet, right? It gets a bit crazy. This thing is attached to you at all times, but it is so incredibly important. And Fee was the one that drilled this into me is you need to take time out for yourself. So the one big thing that I've put into place now is five or 10 minutes a day of meditation. So slowing down your mind, Stop the chitter chatter because I'm telling you it will send you almost batshit crazy if you don't learn to get on top of it early um, and being able to learn how to quiet your mind. So that's something now for me that is just a non-negotiable every single day. But also um, getting out what's going on. So, you know, whether or not it's journaling or, or however you want to do it. And I was one of those people that went journaling really I don't even know what to write and I don't have time because look at that. I've got a message. You know, I would always, always put my messages first and I see some people's faces like, yep, totally get that. And you have to stop it because there is never, ever a juice plus emergency and your business can take over your life and you didn't join it for that. You joined it for, you joined this business for time freedom. So if there's one little takeaway that I can give you, it's get those things in place now so that when your business is of a size where, you know, the messages are coming in thick and fast, the leadership role has stepped it up a whole heap of notches, you have some really serious foundations in place that take care of you and your family and give your family your time. So we do Wednesday night, date night. That's it. It just that's how it goes because you have to make the time for the people that you love and care about because you want to arrive and I said it to Fee, I wanted to arrive to NMD in grace and style, not with everything falling apart. That happened way prior. <laughs> We'd already nailed that fall apart bit. But, you know, have a think. Don't think about your next promotion. Think about the one after that and the one after that. How do you want to arrive at those promotions? What do you want your life to look like? Do you want that nice car by then? Do you want to be going on holidays? Do you want to be a leader? And it's okay if you don't want to be a leader. It is completely okay if you don't want to be a leader. Um, I think it's really important to understand that if leadership's not your thing, then that's completely fine. There are plenty um, of people within the business that, you know, have taken that on um, wholeheartedly. So that's pretty much all that I have for you guys when it comes to tips and tricks, but they're the things that I've reverted back to after the roller coaster ride um, is just get some quiet. Make sure you can get some quiet. 
I absolutely love that. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. It's fun. Yeah. I think we should do it again, but I think we should bring some champagne. <laughs> uh, I've got a bottle here. <laughs> <laughs> she comes prepared. <laughs> love it. Thank you so much. And again, congratulations. You, Such a an awesome, awesome journey to NMD. Um, and I'm just so excited to keep watching you girls show up and shine. And I think just when I hear the words bombshells, I just think, nailed it. Like you guys just nail it. It doesn't matter what you do, you show up. You guys are just this incredible community of support. And I think it's it's really amazing for everyone else to see what you guys Thank are you doing. Thank you so, so much. Welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. See you, ladies. <laughs>